Hey everybody, I'm Jason Matt. Welcome back to the channel. So my son Leo is three years old now and my wife asked me if I would be willing to make a twin size bed for him. And I just wrapped up that project and on Christmas day, took it into his room and got everything assembled. Well, one of the things that I used on that bed because I wanted to be able to take it apart easily and also finish it in pieces and then be able to take it into his room and assemble it was the Domino connectors for the DF700. Now I've used the Domino 500 connectors on multiple occasions and I think that they are just fantastic. But this was the first time that I actually had the opportunity to use the Domino 700 connectors on a project. So in this video, I'm gonna show you one of the various ways that you can use the Domino 700 connectors. And the example that you'll see today is like a 90 degree butt joint for something like if you're building a bed frame, or let's say you wanted to assemble an apron to a large leg for a table, and you wanted the ability to disassemble that table in the event that you ever moved, or take it to a client's house and set it up on site. The other thing that I wanna say is that if you're familiar with the 500 connectors, this process should be relatively straightforward. However, the process is a little bit different because of the way that the connectors are designed. So let's go ahead and get into the example. All right, so what you see in front of me is two pieces of scrap uh, from the bed project actually of eight quarter white oak. So we got some nice, good, thick material to work with. And I mentioned for this example, let's pretend that this is a leg for a table. And let's pretend that this is an apron. And we wanna bring the two pieces together just like this. Well, to walk through this and better illustrate it, I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down flat, the leg. And we're gonna put the apron vertical. And at this point, I have it perfectly flush to the end of the table leg right here, uh, but we'll talk about if you wanted to offset it. When I actually do the example, we'll actually set it in because in this example, for something like a table apron, it is very common that you're gonna have some sort of reveal on the leg, or you may want it to be flush, but we'll talk about both. So the first thing that I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna make sure that I establish where my reference is. Now, regardless of whether or not I want this to be flush or inset, we know that we need to identify which reference face we're gonna use the plate on the domino. So in this example, this is gonna be one, so let's just mark a star on it, and we know that this is gonna be the other. So I wanna make sure that I'm looking at those when I'm putting my plate on the material. And it's just a reminder, you can sand all this off, it doesn't matter. So we know that this is going to be the show face, this is going to be the show face, and that step is now complete. The next thing that I like to do is determine what my layout is going to be. And if I was doing this scenario where I had an apron this wide, I'm probably gonna go with three mortises. And all that's gonna do is allow me a added strength. And the way that I would lay these out would be just like this. And this is gonna allow everything to line up nice and tight. And it also lets me see that I have more than enough space to be able to go with this configuration. If it was smaller, a smaller apron, and I didn't have as much space, then I would go with a setup like this, where I would have one domino and one domino connector. But for this example, we're gonna go ahead and use all three. Now, the next thing we're gonna need to determine is how we're gonna orient our plunge. So a domino connector, and the dominoes that come with the connector set are 14 by 75. So that means that I'm gonna be plunging 25 into one piece of material and 50 into another. And this example, this is easy to identify what we're gonna do 25 and what we're gonna do 50 because this material is 36 millimeters thick. That means that we're gonna plunge our 25 millimeter plunge into the leg and the 50 millimeter plunge into the apron, which also means that the anchor and post for the domino connector will be in the leg, the tightening mechanism will be in the apron. So we'll actually tighten it on the apron. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go ahead and mark some lines. In not all instances are you ever gonna have to mark reference lines for the domino, but we know we're gonna want one in the center here because we wanna make sure that we reference that. However, here on the edge, I can just use the built-in precision stops on it to use that. So I'm gonna be using a 20 millimeter from this end and I'm gonna use a 20 millimeter from this end. And that's great for the apron because I have a reference edge. However, I don't have a reference edge for this. So I will make a mark for my 20 millimeter location here and the center, and there's really no need to do it on this end. And when I talk about the different stops, I'm referring to these on the Domino 700. So I'm gonna depress these two in. The distance from the inside edge of this 
to the center line is 20 millimeters. So now we're gonna go ahead and mark our center line. And so this board is 108 millimeters wide, so I know the center point is going to be 54. So I'm gonna just mark a little dot there. Then I'm going to transfer that line. And now I've got my center mark. And again, it's unnecessary for me to mark the other two ends. But this is my reference face, that's my center mark. Now, something I do want to do is I do want to go ahead, flip it over to the back side, and I want to mark my center line there as well. And I'll talk more about that when I get to that step, but it will be important later on. So I've got my center line on the back, and here I'm going to go ahead and mark a circle like that, and this is just going to allow me to remember this is where I'm actually plunging for the mechanism that actually tightens everything down. So we can go ahead and flip this back over. I can set this off to the side. All right, so I went ahead and flipped up what my leg would be, and here's my star, so we know that that's the reference face. Again, I don't need to mark my first 20 millimeter because I'm going to use the machine. However, I do need to make sure that I mark where that center line is going to be. Transfer that line. And then also, this is just a little tip. Something that helps me is instead of making the line all the way across the board, I always stop it short on whatever side is not the reference. So if it's start, wherever the line starts, that's also my reference edge. So just another way to remember it. Now we do know that we need a mark for where the other line would be because I don't have a reference edge to use the stop. So in this case, we knew that the length of the apron was 108. If I need my line to be 20 millimeters away from that, then I'm gonna set my measuring device to 88. I'm gonna make my mark and I'm gonna transfer that line. So now we can go ahead and get the machine set up to start doing the plunges. And we'll go ahead and start on the vertical piece. These will all be 25 millimeter depth plunges, and then we'll switch everything over and do the 50 millimeter. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the setup. So like I just said, we're gonna be plunging to a depth of 25 millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my plunge depth to 25. I'm using the tight setting. Now before I had mentioned, you can either have it flush or you can have it set back, which would be you know, typical on a table apron. So we're gonna go ahead and set this one back. And so let's talk about that for a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my plate down. I wanna make sure that I lock that in place. And then we wanna adjust the height. And I know that my material thickness is 36 millimeters, so I know that I want to set this to 18 millimeters because I want it to be centered on my apron. However, if we wanna see a setback, we're gonna go ahead and put this at 30. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us about a 12 millimeter setback like you see there. If I wanted it to be flush, then obviously I would set it on the same that I would do on the apron. We're gonna go ahead and raise that plate up to give us that offset for this demonstration. So once I have that set, I'm gonna lock this down and we're good to go ahead and make our first cuts. All right, so there is my first three mortises cut into what would be the leg. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get set up for the apron. So now we know we need to go ahead and move this to 50, because that's what I want my plunge depth. 50 and 25 equals 75. So that's set, tight setting again. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna adjust the depth. Now we said my material is 36, so we know we wanna be at 18 if we want it to be centered on the apron. So. On the Domino XL, you have 15 or you have 20. So I wanna be somewhere in between that. Obviously I need to be at 18. Well, I don't have a three millimeter Domino to take care of the issue, but I do have a three millimeter spacer block. And once I have that set, I can go ahead, pull that out. And now I know that I'm set 18 millimeters depth. So again, tight setting, 50 millimeters plunge depth. I've got it set to 18. And again, on the ends, we're gonna be using these detents right here. And then we're gonna be using the center line marker for the center line. So we'll go ahead and make our plunges. I'll start with both outside edges and then finish in the center. And there we go. Now we have our three mortises on the apron. So now let's go ahead and talk about plunging down on this piece here to accept the mechanism that goes in 
to pull everything together and lock it. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll talk about setup. So let's first talk about the plate height. Well, I know that the offset that it needs to be is 40. So the plate just needs to go to 40, period. Done, that's done. It needs to be 40 millimeters back from the edge of the board. So that is good. Now, plunge depth is what we need to determine. And the way that we determine the plunge depth is we wanna measure where the center line of this domino is, which I already know the answer because I just set it. So we're 18 millimeters. 18 millimeters to the center line of that mortise. To determine the plunge depth, it has to go all the way through this mortise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 18 and we're gonna add 10 to it. And that gives us a total of 28. But since there is no 28 on the depth setting, we're just gonna go ahead and round up and go to 30, which is fine. We have 36 millimeter material. So I'm locked in at 30 as the plunge depth. And obviously this is now going to be a vertical plunge. Okay, so we've got everything set up and then this is where that reference line comes in so important because on the back, I wanna make sure it's, it's centered and I'm gonna use the reference line that is etched into the bottom of the domino. Well, that's what I'm gonna line up with my reference line and I'm gonna plunge out an area right here. So let's go ahead and get that done now. Okay, so I'm lining everything up. All right, I'm dead on with that line. One thing to make sure of, because I made this mistake on my son's bed, on one of the mini that I did, I didn't have the plate all the way up against the piece of material. So I had to actually cap that and replunge. Now, once I'm set, I can go ahead and turn the machine on. All right, let's see how close I was to my, my drawing. Oh, almost dead on. So as you can see, I've got a nice opening right here. I've got all of my mortises cut. Now let's talk about the actual connector and get this thing together. Okay, so these are the parts that we are going to need to make this work. The first thing is obviously we need our two 14 by 75 dominoes. Those are gonna go on the outsides of our domino connector. The first piece to this is what we have here and that's an anchor. This is going to go in the side that we plunged our 25 millimeter depth. Then you have the post. The post, screws into this anchor, and as you tighten this, it pushes these two pieces here out, and it really bites into the wood. The next thing we're gonna need is two of these plastic clips, and these plastic clips will take up the space to act as a domino inside of that mortise. And the way that you attach these is you simply place it over the piece like this, and you're gonna, you're gonna hear it click when I push it down and now that is assembled. Now, this piece right here is going to be the piece that slides into the vertical plunge we just made, and this post is going to go in like this, then you are going to insert this screw, and you're gonna tighten it down with the provided Allen key, and that is going to pull everything together. So let's go ahead and walk through the process and get everything set up and show you exactly what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so this is my leg assembly. This is where we plunged 25 millimeters. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and place this post in, and I'm gonna go ahead and hammer that in. It's something you can do if you wanna get it seated in there. I can just take another domino, hit it once, and it's now just below the surface. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start to thread in the post. Now this post is gonna get to a point where it is hard to turn by hand, so it takes a 10 millimeter wrench and you will just simply tighten it down. And as you tighten this down, it's moving those prongs and it's getting nice and tight. Another thing you can do is use an impact with a 10 millimeter head on it. But since we're only doing one, we'll go ahead and use this. Now, something you need to realize here, this portion right here, let me turn it so the camera can see it. This portion here needs to be facing where this is going to get screwed in. So for this example, this is the exterior portion of the apron and the leg. I need to turn this so it's facing to the interior. So it is now on the interior. Make sure this is nice and straight. Okay, we're good to go. So this piece is set, let's move on to the apron. So anytime I'm using dominoes, if I'm plunging deeper into one, I always prefer to put the dominoes in the piece that has the deeper portion of it, just because it makes the assembly a little bit easier. So 
So dominoes are in. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this anchor right in here. And I wanna make sure it goes in there nice and straight and I'm gonna push it down as far as it'll go. We don't want it canted inside of there. Let me bring you in close so you can see. Like I said, it's in there nice and straight. It's not canted one way or the other. That will affect the joint coming together. So just make sure that you keep an eye on that. I already have the screw placed in there. It's not inhibiting it. So let's go ahead and get this thing together. All right, moment of truth. So go ahead and get our piece on there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start tapping this down. And we're ready to go ahead and tighten. However, I wanted to purposely leave a little bit of a gap so you guys can see it close nice and tight. I'll go ahead and bring it over to the front side where the gap is a little bit more pronounced and you'll be able to see this tighten up nicely as I use this Allen key in the back. Okay, so I'm just now starting to get tight. So you should see that gap close up completely. And just like that, you have an extremely, extremely strong joint that can be assembled and disassembled over and over and over again. Nice and flush over here. We've got that nice 12 millimeter uh, setback. Again, if you wanted it to be perfectly flush, you would have just used the same setting you used on the apron, and this board would be perfectly in line with the exterior portion of the leg. And one final thing to highlight is that what do you do with this exposed part? Well, you could leave it exposed or the kit does come with some of these clips and this is the color I used on my son's bed, uh, which goes really well with the white oak. And these simply just click in just like that. And I'll be honest, from, a, from just a few feet away, it's really even hard to tell or hard to pick up unless you're looking for those uh, that those are there on my son's bed. But that's how you would cover up the hole. That is your domino connectors for the DF700. So I know that this is only one way that you can use the connectors in your furniture, but I would say it's probably one of the more common ways that people would need to know if they wanted to try them out for the first time. So I'll do more videos showing the other methods in future videos. If this was not the connection or the joint that you were looking for with the domino connectors, consider heading over to Sedge Tool here on YouTube and see some of the videos that he has because he has done videos on both the 500 and 700 connectors either on his channel or on the Festool USA channel. To close this video out, I will again say that I am extremely, extremely impressed with just how strong these are. And I would trust these in a lot of different applications. I'm telling you, my son's bed is rock solid and it's heavy because the entire thing is built out of eight quarter white oak, but those connectors brought everything together, no problems. It is super sturdy, um, but they're really not challenging or difficult. It just seems like it can be very overwhelming because when you open up a box that has all the connector pieces and it, it's like, where do I even begin? So again, I hope you found that information helpful. Uh, if I didn't answer something about this technique specifically, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below and I'd be happy to respond. And if you wanna find out more about me and what I do, head over to benswoodworking.com. That's gonna do it for this video. Until next time, everybody get out in the shop, try something new, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.